So this is a right hand drive, Series 2 E-Type 1970. I'm going to show how to strip down and rebuild the power steering rack um, only because I can't find anywhere where anyone's got one and all the diagrams you find online are all the Series 3 racks you just don't find the Series 2 power steering rack diagrams anywhere that shows you how to strip them down, rebuild them etc and there are a couple of slight variations on the racks themselves as well but anyway, here we go as you can see, the easiest way to get these steering racks off is to take the radiator out disconnect it all and then it easily slides out from one side then out through the middle ok so here's the power steering rack you can always tell a right hand side from a left hand side steering rack by simply flipping it and the big nut which puts pressure on the rack itself and the tower are in that configuration on the right hand side power steering rack if it was left hand side power steering rack it would be down this end ok so I've taken the drain pipes out and I've also taken out the actual hydraulic feeds to the rack basically the way the rack works is in the middle here you've got a piston and you've got hydraulic fluid either going into one side or the other side and that pushes it or assists it across the main issue is taking the tower apart and checking that all the gubbins inside the tower are working and um, to make sure that that's all correct and then we have to make sure that we correctly tension the rack with this big nut okay so I've undone the three bolts that hold the tower in place let's lift the tower out Okay, there's a the tower off and that's the valve that controls everything okay so the tower's now been lifted out um, there's the worm gear and if you look inside there you'll see the actual rack itself um, this is the interesting part here and what's down the centre of there which is the torsion bar so as you turn the steering wheel it actually twists the torsion bar which allows fluid through the holes to drive either one side of the rack or the other side of the rack so if I move the rack a little bit you see it pushing the oil out one way or the other depends which way it's going right so here's the main components um, this is the main spline shaft that you turn with your steering this is the torsion bar as you can see the pin through it and this is the spiral that it turns on so these here teeth here are quite wide compared to the teeth here to allow the inner to twist more than the outer which obviously twists the torsion bar which then brings the holes here in line with the holes in the tower so there's all the main components together the bearing sits in there and that's the bearing that sits in the bottom of this part here on the tower itself so that's all the main internals of the actual tower which I'm now going to clean and rebuild if you find your shaft is a bit wobbly inside there there is I can't quite see it but there is actually a fuzzy bronze bush which actually rubs on this part of the shaft here just to give it that little bit of motion so if you've got a wobbly shaft it's usually because that bush is worn Alright, so we've taken the tracker ends off, we've taken the rubber boots off, they're pretty easy to remove. I've just folded back all the tab washers and slackened off the nuts to remove these from the end of the rack. There are shims in the end here that um, sets the pressure on the arms. So we'll adjust that when we rebuild the rack. Yeah, don't forget as well that you've got your spring in here and that needs to go with the parts as well. Okay, so now I've got the ends off. I can now use the two nuts to counteract each other to actually undo these nuts off the actual um, rack itself. Okay, this is now slackened off. You'll see in there there's the oh, there's like a steel ring. Okay, you've got to click that off as well to get this um, nailed nut off. Um, in terms of the end cap now this should gently just tap off As you can see using a copper hammer so it don't do any damage okay, so though all those parts came off here they are on the bench here's the big uh, clip locking ring now in here 
you'll see the bushes, I know the bushes on this are quite good, but there's also seals, you've got a seal in here, oops, needs to be replaced, and there's a seal inside here, so as you can see it just in here needs to be replaced as well. There's a seal in here that needs to be replaced. Now I've unscrewed the actual feed coupling here. Now if you see inside, there's actually a ring inside there. So you can see it moving. That now needs to be gently slid out with the shaft. Okay, so I'm now pulling the shaft out. Here it comes. So there's the other seal. That's it gently out. Okay, now I may have to tip this upside down to actually get this to fall out. But inside there now there's like it's got O-rings on it as well, which needs to be replaced. Okay, so I'm gently bouncing it on the bench, and there it is. And that's the ring. Okay. Last thing to remember is this was the actual um, pressure plate which goes onto the top of the rack. As you can see it moves onto the rack and off the rack. You need to get that out as well. Okay, so that is basically the Adwest Jaguar E-Type Series 2 steering rack. Disassembled, ready for new parts, new seals and then a rebuild. Right, I'll give it a clean off. Now we've got to get the last seal out which is the one right down in the centre there. Now I use it's a piece of broom handle basically so I can gently tap it out without any damage and here it comes and there should be a seal and the washer there it is remember the way it goes in it fits in that way so the seal face is towards the non-pump end in other words it fits in like that up the shaft this rack looks in quite good condition so you've got here is one of the feeds coming in and the other feed is here the end cap so you can see that this is the seal and this is the piston so as pressure builds on this side the ram pushes that way as pressure comes on this side ram pushes that way so it's not got a lot of movement but that's the critical seal in the middle that actually moves it and all these seals do here which basically sits about there in the rack is to stop the hydraulic pressure bleeding that way into where the tower is and the actual gears of the rack are. And that's simply the Adwest rack. It's quite a simple rack but it's quite effective. I don't know if you can see the writing on the rack there but it actually says POW P-O-W dash A A dash R-A-K rack power rack. That's the original um, rack that fits on the series 2 power rack. So the seals get arrived today from Cardi Clinton in Birmingham um, and it includes these white PTFE seals which are the essential ones for the tower seals. I'm going to be replacing them now. These can be quite difficult because they're square section seals and they're quite tough. I always find if everything's nice and warm they tend to go on a little bit easier. Right so we've now changed the seals that were on this. Um, I have to say when you get them on you have to sort of wind them on a little bit with the um, screwdriver and that means they do go a bit baggy so the solution I've found um, a bit of plastic um, 5 litre container I wrap it round this unit put a jubilee clip around it and then wind the jubilee clip up slowly to recompress these seals around and then I fit them back in the tower and then they reform to the new shape I've also I've also replaced this seal here on the shaft, so now it's just a case of putting the shaft back on. To mention that I also replaced the bush inside here, so that the shaft is now firmer again. Um, but that was a case of having to fit a bush and then turn it out gently on the lathe until it was a nice close fit. Okay, now we have to fit the aligning screw back into the valve, and then it's offset. If you look at the top, it's actually offset. And the idea is that you screw it in, move it around until these line up clearly in the centre of the splines. Put this in with a touch of Loctite. Right, so the bearings on, circlips on, and I've just dry fitted it into the actual tower itself 
just to check the alignment through the holes now if you look through there and I've got another one here inside now what you want to make sure is that those white seals perfectly align with the holes so you can't see the white seals when you look through the feed holes the pressure feed the return holes and that looks perfect in terms of being fully home on the bearing in the housing so that looks spot on to me at the moment if it's not that adjust a screw which fits through this hole here you can adjust slightly to bring this up or down okay Okay, this is the top of the tower, I've just done up the circlip and now there's a seal here, I'm going to remove this seal. There's also, if you look, underneath a roller bearing underneath. I mean the roller bearing on this one's really good but you can also replace that roller bearing if need be. The new seal's fitted. Um, just to say, the original seal was a one piece and the new seal came as two pieces. The actual seal and then a hardened rubber top cap. It's exactly the same design just a two part seal ok now I can put the shaft back in the actual uh, tower and hopefully um, job done in terms of that part of the rebuild and there we have the tower rebuilt um, one of the things that is unique about the E-Type Jag Series 2 power steering system is this spline here lots of other vehicles like the Triumph Stag have similar power uh, add west power axe however the splines here are different the actual angle on the spline is different and it's critical because of the angle it has to run at in the actual Jaguar itself I'll put some more information on about this a bit later because I've got a Triumph Stag on here as well so you can see the actual difference you can't convert the left hand side E-Type power steering rack to right hand side because the gears actually angle in a different direction so on this one they're angled this way on the left hand drive one the gears are angled that way the teeth on the rack itself are just parallel to the shaft this is what gives it the angle for the actual tower to fit onto the power steering rack right so we're now going to do the actual rack itself replace all the seals on that this is the PTFE seal which is on the main hydraulic piston itself um, I say taking the old seals off isn't a pretty job and getting the new ones on isn't particularly pretty either um, you basically have to fit it in and then roll it around with a screwdriver till it goes in the slot and then recompress it like I showed before I use a piece of plastic and a jubilee clip just to squeeze it back into shape hold it there for a few minutes and then it holds a new shape Right, the new seal's in. Um, just be aware that underneath this seal there is also a spring washer. Uh, it's like castellated to actually hold pressure on the inside edge of this particular seal. So you need to make sure that's in good condition as well. Right, this is the seal on the bottom of the tower. And, and basically, you get your screw out, just peel the thing out. If you look at the seal, you'll see it's got a lip and the lip goes into a slot right underneath there so you need to make sure that slot's fully cleaned out before you push the next seal in these are quite soft seals and they don't have any reinforcement around their edges like on a modern seal like a, like a coil spring or stuff so these are quite soft seals so they will fit into these holes quite easily and this is the final critical seal because this is the bottom of the tower seal you saw the top of the tower seal before and that's what stops the hydraulic fluid leaking into the rack into the actual worm gears of the rack through here or out of the top of the rack um, through what is actual pinion ok new seal is fitted as you can see now I tend to put these seals in with just a touch of hydraulic fluid on them because um, you're probably aware that these power steering systems work on basically hydraulic fluid from a gearbox um, so it just helps to settle the seal in into that slot which I was showing you before ok so this is where things get a little bit interesting now so we've now got to fit the seal back inside the shaft so first of all you need to slide the steel washer down and then you fit the seal now the seal sealing face must be facing towards you and the nylon ring faces away from you so it goes in like that now to push it down the shaft I go back to my old trusted 
cut off broom handle and I just gently push it down a little bit at a time until I'm sure it's fully seated at the bottom. Right, new seals now in place. If you find the actual blue um, ring falls off, put it on with a touch of grease. It's okay because the grease will be on the far side, i.e. the rack side of it, as opposed to you don't want to contaminate the hydraulic fluid on this side of the seal. So you've got it with the sealing face towards me. The next thing to stick back in is going to be the securing ring. Again, that just slides down and then as you remember from when we dismantled it, the actual um, hydraulic oil feed holds that in place, the banjo for that holds that in place. Right, the retaining ring's now in and it's held in secure now with the banjo fitting at the top. Just to mention, there's a couple of types of these. This one's a taper type fitting and some of them have a flat cut um, so you need a specialised washer for that. It's a washer with an O-ring inside it. Um, this one's overhead taper fit. Um, so fitting it in, I put a bit of PTFE tape on it just to make sure we get a good seal. So now it's time to refit the rack. Now you have to be really careful here. Because of the teeth on here, as you slide it into the shaft, you've got to make sure those teeth don't damage that seal. So when you push it in, make sure you put some weight on the bottom of the shaft i.e. taking weight off the teeth side of the shaft so it doesn't chatter and damage the seal and it should be a perfect fit I always put a smear again of hydraulic fluid on this to help it slide in I'm now prising out the seals from the end cover and as you can see it's quite a difficult seal to get out but again a nice soft seal remember which direction the sealing face is on that sealing face must always face towards the hydraulic pressure so that's the old seal out and you can just about see I think the new seal in there sitting inside that edge just above where you've got the two copper washers sorry copper uh, bushes copper bushes on this are really good so I'm leaving them without replacing them right, the final seal to replace is the one which sits on this lip here and that's this seal it's a square section seal and that makes the seal with the outside of the shaft here again to make this a sealed piston compartment. We're almost ready to put the end cap back on so now we need to put on the lock ring loosely. The pin that fits in the sorry the circle that fits in this ring here that it pulls against when it locks it in place and then we can fit the end cap on. Um, I tend to put because if you look this way they tend to go rusty around here so I tend to put a bit of grease on that when I fit it on just to make sure there's a grease seal underneath all of this fitting here. Right end caps on, um, this is still quite loose, the uh, locking castle nut here, um, leave that loose because you have to adjust the actual um, fittings on the rack to match uh, your car. Okay so now let's fit the tower on. Okay, so I've put the gasket on there. I always put a bit of um, instant gasket seal and cement on this, um, a clear one usually, an RTV type gasket cement. And here's the actual um, tower bracket, so it only goes on one way. Next gasket goes on and then we'll fit the tower. So tower's installed now um, and the slipper plate has been tensioned. I tend to tension these to the point where it just takes the kick out of the shaft when you rotate it. Nice smooth movement. Right, just now to complete the uh, rebuild. Put the uh, rods on the end, gaiters on. I'd say the last thing to do now is once we've fitted it on the car, get those two plates flat and then we can tighten up the actual slip ring with the um, clamp and then finally job done. Now fitted the lock washers here, the end cap nuts and the spring in the end. I do them both ends at the same time so when I tighten the nuts up I can use the torque from either side of the rack so I don't twist it. Okay, now I've just got to put in the um, shafts. Remember these are shimmed to tension the ball here so this might need re-shimming and I've had it to bits. Again I liberally grease all of this and of course new uh, tab washers. Gates back on, track rod ends back on, all finished. Um, the only thing to mention is when you're tensioning these up with the shims, you want to so there's just a bit of drag in it. 
not too much just a little bit of drag in it and now there's only two things left to do which is fit the hydraulic pipes back on and then I say realign the mounting brackets and tighten up the um, lock ring last thing to remember to fit as well is one goes here one goes here and these are basically um, drain nipples um, look like this what it's for is if there's any seepage past the hydraulic ram the hydraulic fluid will come to the lowest point of the rack here and here and then will drain out so you don't end up with some sort of hydraulic action stopping the actual um, rack moving as such so they just need to be fitted in and on the series 2 the especially on the right hand drive one you've got a really difficult fit in here because the lower radiator pipe cuts right across the rack so you've actually got to try and make sure that the hose doesn't rub on these nipples and rub them through. Um, to make it work on mine, I've actually taken the actual nipple off the end, the actual pipe end, um, because it was rubbing on the pipe and likely to puncture it, so hence uh, just cut it off. It doesn't matter because all it is is actually a drain. If you came with them and it should have done, in here there are two compressible seals. This is what they look like. Um, Obviously it makes sense to pull the old ones out and fit the new ones in just so that when you put the return and the feed, pressure feed from the uh, hydraulic pump it's got a new sealing face to uh, clamp onto. So the rack's now just loosely fitted on. I've tightened the bolt on this side so that levels this plate. This side the plate was a little bit off so a couple of little taps that's now got this plate parallel. I can now clamp up the ring to hold it all in place. And it is now all back together, steered and rack in. You have to make sure that the heater hose down here isn't touching the trigger wheel. So we've got about a half inch gap, so we should be okay with that. And um, once you get it started, you just turn your steering wheel right to left lock a few times to get the air out of the system. Then, of course, top up again the reservoir, and away you go. So, one steering rack, 1970s E-type Jag, power steering right hand drive, refurbed. It's taken about a day, day and a half to do it all. Um, other than that, job that pretty well anyone can do.